Okay, so today in this class, uh, in this session, we're going to talk about significant figures. So what are significant figures? So significant figures are the non-placeholding digits in a reported measurement. So this idea here is that sometimes we have zeros that are there just to let us know if it's a really big number or a really small number. And so the zeros really don't tell us anything other than you know how many decimal places is this number. But significant figures will actually tell us, okay, are these numbers there to tell us an actual value or are they there just to tell us how big something is? So significant figures are saying that they're actually important. They're also going to be um, helpful to give us an idea of a range. So how accurate or how precise can I be with my values? So for example, 12.3 has three sig figs, and we're going to talk about how I know that in a second. We'll go through all the rules. So that means that this number has a range from 12.2 to 12.4. Okay? So it's only going to be to one decimal place. We're here, 12.30 has four significant figures, and so it has the range of 12.29 and 12.31. So it actually goes to two decimal places after versus here, which is only one decimal place. So then you might say, okay, well, how do I know how many significant figures this number has? Why does this have three and why does this have four? So there's a few rules that you have to use that when you look at a number, you can determine how many significant figures it has. Okay. So here are the rules. Rule number one is that all non-zero digits are significant. So sig figs, short for significant figures, so Sig is just going to be short for significant. So if it's not a zero, it counts. Okay? So for example, 1.5, how many significant figures would that have? So the 1 and the 5 are non zero, so they both count. So if I asked you, you would write two significant figures. Or sometimes you'll write sig figs, however, or you just write two. If I'm asking this on like an exam or something. So that's rule number one. Now let's look at rule number two. Number two says interior zeros are significant. You can also kind of think about these as like sandwiched in or zeros that are bookended. Okay? So that means that if you look at the zero, if you go to the left or if you go to the right, at some point you have to hit a non-zero number. So for example here, this would be 1.05. Does it matter? I could have put 10.5. I could have moved the decimal place over into there. Either way, it could have been 10.5 or 1.5. Doesn't matter where the decimal place is. So if I'm trying to count significant figures, the one counts, the five counts because they're not zero, but I have a zero. But he's sandwiched in, he's booked in. If I go to the left, there's a number that's not zero. If I go to the right, there's a number that's not zero. So he counts. So one, two, three significant figures. All right, let's do rule number three. So number two was if they were in the middle. So rule three is gonna be if they're at the beginning. So leading zeros are not significant. So leading zeros are not. So this means if they're at the very beginning of a number, and if I go to the left, I don't have a non-zero number there. So for example, 0 0.00105. So I said, how many significant figures does this have? Okay. So the one and the five count because of rule one. Then we see these zeros, these are in the front. So all of these are leading. They're leading because when I go to the left, I never hit a non-zero number. This one is a sandwich zero, it's an interior zero. So this guy counts, this guy counts, he counts. Since these are all leading zeros, they don't count. So this one is also only three significant figures. 
Now, we don't really, so we don't really like these zeros here because the only reason they're here is to tell me that this number isn't 105 or 1.5 or 10.5, that it's a much smaller number. So they're only here to tell me the size. That's why they're not significant because they're not actually telling me anything about the value itself, just the bigness or smallness of it. And so to avoid all of these non-significant digits that are just sitting here, how we would like to write these numbers are in scientific notation. So you're gonna have to see a lot, you're gonna see a lot of scientific notation in chem class, okay? So the way that we write scientific notation is we put our finger on the decimal, wherever it's at, and we wanna put it behind the first real number, the first significant number. So we go one, two, three. So we wanna put it behind the one, so we put it behind the one, so it's 1.05 times 10, and we move three, three times, three times to the right, so if it's right, it's negative, or you can also think this is a really small number, so if it's a small number, it has to be a negative three, okay? So we like to always adjust these things and write in scientific notation, and then if I'm trying to look at a scientific notation and say how many sig figs, I don't worry about the 10 and the negative three, I look at just my 1.05, and this number is the same as we did before. So, it's three sig figs. And whenever you go from this to this, it should have the same number of significant figures. But now, I don't have to worry about these being, you know, important numbers or not. It's telling me only the it's significant, only the numbers that matter. So, this also has three significant figures. Alright, so we did zeros in the uh, middle. Zeros in the front, so what do you think we're gonna do now? Zeros on the back. Oh, I had numbers. Oh well. All right, so for number four, these are gonna be called trailing zeros because they're at the end. And trailing zeros may or may not be significant. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, how do I know what the answer is? It's going to be in one of two conditions. So this has kind of got two sub-rules based on what the conditions are. So the first sub-rule uh, sub for trailing zeros is that trailing zeros after a decimal are significant. So for example, 1.050, and say how many significant figures? So the one and the five count, because of rule one, this is an interior zero, so it counts based on rule two. This is a trailing zero, so he's at the end. So then I say, is there a decimal point? Yep, it's after the decimal point, so it counts. So one, two, three, four. So this would be four significant figures, okay? Now, what if there's not really a decimal point written, there's not one written, or it's not after the decimal point? What do I do then? So trailing zeros at the end of a number without a written decimal point are what we call ambiguous. Okay? It's ambiguous. It means it's not clear. So it's not telling me, does it count? Does it not count? It's not really giving me enough information to make that decision. So if we get, in this case, our answer isn't four or a number, it's just ambiguous. We actually say the word ambiguous. Okay? And so we don't really like that. We want to be more accurate. We want to actually say a number. And so this should be avoided by using scientific notation. So let's look at an example. up my board a little bit. Okay, so here's an example. 150. So 150. 
So what this means is I don't know if this zero is here to tell me that it's not 15, that it's really 150, or if this zero is here because it actually is important. Okay? Because there's no decimal place, I have no idea. So I don't know if this should be a really big number or a really small number. And so if you had just 150 and I said how many significant figures, your answer would be ambiguous. You would just write the word ambiguous. So the way that we try to get rid of this is we want to be more accurate. So say this number was written in scientific notation, there's a couple ways. We could just put like a decimal here, but then we don't know if it's at the end of the sentence and then the zero isn't after the decimal. So that's not the best way to go. So the best way is to write it in scientific notation. So if the zero is not significant, when we write it, we want to leave it out. So we'd go one, two over. And since it's a big number, it's a positive two. So this is how we would write it if the zero was not significant. If it was, we would keep the zero and it's still times 10 to the second. This here would be two sig figs. This here would be three. So that's why these numbers are difficult because I don't know if this zero counts or doesn't count. If it's there just to tell me how big the number is or if it's there to actually make a difference in my value. Okay, our last rule is called the exact rule. Okay, so exact numbers have an unlimited number. Unlimited number of significant figures. So a number is known to be exact if we can know with complete certainty. So, for example, counting individuals. So we might say, well, how many people are in this room? Well, I'm by myself. So it would be one. I'm not half. I'm not one and a half. I'm not two. I'm only one person. So we know that completely. So we have complete certainty. So one person in this room is an exact number. We might know it from definitions. One centimeter is exactly equal to 0 0.01 meters. This one is an exact number. This one is an exact number. These are leading zeros that don't count. They also might be in equations. The radius is the diameter divided by two, or half the diameter. So this two here is going to tell me that it's an exact number, okay? So you wouldn't say that this has one sig fig, you would say it's an exact number because it's in an equation. So your kind of your helpful hint is if it's in an equation, if it's in a definition, or if I'm counting individual objects, so like if it were a number, a population or something, then you know that the answer is going to be exact. All right, so on the next um, lecture video, just so that they're not too long, we'll break it up, we'll start doing some of the practice problems. So if you want, what I recommend is pop, before you start the next video, work through these, and then whenever I go through them, you can check to see if you got them right or not.